Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. I'm James, and since 2008, I've been writing and delivering weld inspection courses throughout the world, including C-SWIP Weld Inspection Range, which is their C-SWIP 3.0, 3.1, 3.2s, and a load of other things. In this series of videos, I want to share with you the root of your weld inspection course. So in this one, we're going to look at the C-SWIP 3.0. What we have to do, how we get on the course, what it looks like, and how the examinations work. Remember to like and subscribe for more content and make sure you hit that notification bell to stay up to date as I release future content. So in this video, we're going to go over the CSWIP 3.0 course, how you get on it, what's involved and what the exam looks like. So as always, as a quick disclaimer, this is how I teach the course. It's not always taught exactly the same way or in the same order, but the same information is covered. Lecturers definitely look at the class they have, work out quite quickly what they need to teach more of or spend more time on, and that, that moves it through. But everybody covers the same content as a requirement from C-SWIP. Yeah. And this information, and is my opinion, it's not endorsed by C-SWIP or, or TWI. So who is it aimed at? Well, the C-SWIP 3.0 is definitely an entry course. So it's anybody who needs to show that basic level of training that might be to show skill sets within a business internally, or if a client comes and says, well, who's looking at my welds? What level of training do they have? It definitely falls nicely to people say, well, they have had external training from the TWI and they're certificated to do that job. So people like welders who are maybe self-certain their own welds before passing it on to a main inspector. You've taken out a lot of the noise so the inspection staff can have a little bit of room. Or maybe an apprentice who's starting out within the QC world, it's a good way of getting them in, getting them trained to a point to be able to, to move on. And then maybe in a few years' time, look to do a 3.1. So what do I need to do? My experiential requirements, there's different requirements for the free C-SWIP and weld inspection courses. Now for this one, like with all of them, there's this document, C-SWIP WI 692. Now this covers all of the rules from C-SWIP for TWI to be able to give the course. So if you, if you need any doubt, this is free online. If you type into Google or whatever search engine you use and say C-SWIP WI692, you can get the scheme document directly from C-SWIP for free. So please have a read through that. That will give you the, the minutia detail of what I'm going through today. So in that document in section 1.3.1, it says four C with 3.0 at visual weld inspector level. There's no specific entry requirements. So, you know, this, this is an entry course. You know, we're not expecting you to have in, yeah, inspected welds for so many years, but it does help. So a minimum of six months experience, at least seeing welds and seeing weld defects, working within a quality team will make it a lot easier for you but it's not a requirement. So what's my duties? What, what am I allowed to do once I qualify as a 3.0? Well, again, back to WI 692, section 1.2.1, it's very clear. You can visually inspect, but you can't produce inspection reports. That falls in at 3.1 level, but you can go out, look at things, report back 
to a more senior inspector. In that, in that way, it says, you know, under the supervision of a weld inspector or a senior weld inspector, you can do a list of other things to help you do that visual inspection, but you shouldn't be the only person on the shop floor reviewing, signing off, approving. That's not, this is a really short course. It's a day and a half. It won't give you the skills or show competence in the range of things you need to do. So we are getting us into the shop floor and start inspecting. So what does the course look like? Well, on day one, I normally you know, start with the introduction. Hello, how are you? What we're doing? Find out what type of class I'm dealing with. Go through those duties of a weld inspector, explain how we do things at a very sort of top level. And then start going through a well design. Okay, this is what a well design looks like. Here's potential issues and where we should be looking for different types of defects, pulling in welding defect types. You know, this is what a lack of fusion looks like. This is what a slag looks like. This is how we measure them. This is how we think about their risk profile on why some are worse than others. And I tend to start building in here the difference between welding standards and how they look at welding defects differently. We then cover welding processes. Again, I tend to do, we do them all. We do MMA, take, make mag, flux core, a little bit of sub arc very quickly. And then I pay more attention to MMA because the welds you'll see will likely be MMA welds. So understanding that process in a little detail will help us identify the defects more easily. Then we'll stop for lunch, have a break, assimilate what we've done during the morning. For our afternoon to be a practical session, people tend to work better with practicals in the afternoon with theory in the morning. So we'll show you how to take the plate, how to inspect it and record it. And only give you one blank, just have a go, see where we get, go through the answers, give you another one and, 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 and see where we are. And then get a fillet weld inspection in at that point as well. Looking at how we use the fillet weld gauges or the cam gauges, which we have a video on uh, up above here now, um, and generally taking measurements. Day two, so okay. As it's a practical based course, we're, we're going to keep hitting those practical sessions. So more plates, more fillets, going over the answers, discussing again how to measure, how to drive forward on those. And then have a, a, a another review session just of defect types, where we're likely to see them. What defects am I likely to see above on the cap or the excess weld metal side and on the route below? Because you know, there's some crossover, but if we think about where defects are likely to happen, it should make our review more straightforward. Then we'll stop for our break, you know, get, get some dinner, get settled. That gives me a time to get the exam samples out, make sure we've got everything. Nowadays, the exams are done on iPads. So I'll get them out, make sure we've got all the login details for everybody, set the room out for you to be able to come back in, sit at your table, everything be there and start your exam. So the exam, that's in the afternoon of the second day. It's practical only, so it's two parts. Okay, and again, this is in WI. 692, Appendix 1, Section 1, tells us what the exam needs to be. And in that, it says we'll do a plate inspection, and you get, according to this document, you get two hours. And then you get a series of questions on your fillet. And you have 30 minutes. So the fillet weld is definitely measuring leg lengths, measuring four thicknesses, a quick look at uh, have I got any defects, answer the multi-choice questions, just away we go. 
plate we need to produce a report and then answer multiple choice questions based on that and the way we use the calm gauge and the filler welds is up above here and we need a pass mark of 70 percent for each section it's not a composite grade so you can get 70 percent in one and 70 percent in the other if you fail one of these parts you will come back and reset the part you failed if you then fail again well, you have to come back and do do the course again and uh, hopefully we, we won't get to that point so that's CSWIFT 3.0 as it currently stands in 2022. Uh, if anything changes, I'll, I'll redo this video for 2023. Um, I think it's fairly stable at the moment. It's a fairly straightforward course. But um, don't panic. Any questions, do the ones you know, the ones you think you know, and guess the rest. And with that, good luck with your studies, and I hope to see you in one of, 